With a sequel to The Evil Within just on the horizon, I figured it'd be a good time to go back and talk about the first Evil Within. The Evil Within, the first game, was released in 2014, and it's an action survival thriller type of game. One that I really enjoyed. Now I want to talk about a specific element of this game and a specific piece of it, rather than the game as a whole. So let's get into it. Why is Chapter 3 so special? Let's start out with the obvious, the atmosphere. I mean, just look at this environment. It hits all the right horror movie cliches really well. First, it's set at night, which is a great thing to have. You can't really see everything. And on top of that, there is a good layer of fog throughout this whole level, along with how the lighting is done too. Being able to cast these creepy like shadows, putting you on edge as you're exploring the map. The level prevents a good use of those shadows, especially when they're cast with the enemies or just some object in the environment. I do also really like that music isn't really used a lot here. It's you, usually music is used in situations to alert the player upon different things. So sometimes when you're playing a stealth action game, it'll alert you to being caught or you start hearing that battle theme and you know that a good fight is coming your way. Here, Evil Within really relies on the sounds of the environment, specifically in this level. There's not a lot of, oh, oh, here comes a fight, here comes a fight. It's more so, oh God, I turned the corner and someone's there with a knife. But you know, all that I heard was just the woods and the forest in the background. Chapter three really relying on, say, the sounds of the environment, it really helps to kind of put you in a scary situation because you don't have any of those musical cues really alerting you to anything. It's really all on you to explore and what you find. This effectively helps create a creepy atmosphere. And the wind blowing, especially at night, in a forest with this fog is a nice touch too. Added to this atmosphere is the screaming and the sound of a potential enemy that is caged up. What I really like about this in chapter three especially is because you're in this enclosed area. There is a bunch of stuff that you can go and explore and do within this area, but within this area, there is an enemy, a potential enemy, because when you're playing through it the first time, you don't know if you're gonna fight this individual, but you continuously hear him scream and start bashing about. So every time I would hear him scream, I would immediately go down and crouch because I don't know if walking or any of those types of sounds would potentially instigate him. And when you're in this area for the first time, you don't have many materials. You're really relying on what you have. So you don't want to fight him right away. This I really liked because effectively this part, by having this guy making those sounds, having it be creepy, it just, it creates this constant persistent threat that could come after you. You don't know. I mean, playing through it the first time, you're like, well, I don't know if this guy's scripted or not. I don't know if I make too much noise, he'll come after me. Now, playing this part again on New Game Plus does kill a lot of the tension because you know what causes this individual to break free and then come after you. And by this point, after you've beaten the game, you're armed to the teeth. Like you are like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando and can kick the crap out of the chainsaw tree cutting madman easily, very easily. Right? Wrong. <laughs> But part of this also feeds into my other point, the exploration in this chapter. There's a lot of nook and crannies to this chapter. This chapter, like I said before, it isn't big, but there's a lot of dense parts to it where you really want to explore because you'll find a lot of items that will really help you throughout the rest of the game. On your first playthrough exploring this level, it's just essential. I mean, you get some really good weapons and items and it really rewards you for looking everywhere for this stuff. Now you can totally beat this mission in say like 20 minutes, but you're really missing a lot of what this level has to offer. This took me probably about over an hour the first time I played it. I took it slow and I tried to find everything I could. Now chapter three does contrast with the first two chapters of the game, whereas the first two chapters are very linear affairs. And I really like the change of pace with chapter three. It allowed me to take a break, be able to take a breather with the game and be able to enjoy the environments instead of being scripted event, scripted event, scripted event. And what I like too is chapter three was able to create this nice tension that consistently played throughout the level. And granted, there weren't really any set pieces except for the boss fight kind of at the end of the chapter. But for the most part, it really relied on you exploring and trying to figure out the environment. 
I really like that and that was something that really jumped out at me the first time I played this. Now I'm not saying that this chapter doesn't include all the elements from the game that I enjoy because some of the boss fights later in the game are thoroughly engaging and intense. But chapter 3 is kind of like this. You know when you play a video game and you don't know if the game is going to grab you and you're in this uneasy spot with the game and then a plot point happens or a gameplay element happens or something happens that just hooks you? Well chapter 3 did that for me. With the sequel coming out soon, I hope it contains levels and or areas that retain many of the good elements from Chapter 3 and build off of them. So there you have it. Why is Chapter 3 so special? It's the hook chapter, and it's why I really enjoy Evil Within and what really initially grabbed me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.